hello guys and today we have here our duel with final yes we're in finals and so uh round two of battle city has started and the tcg banless tcg cards so i'm running burning abyss like we haven't seen this before i'm not even allowed to run the new cards because they haven't updated so it's just really, really unfortunate. But nonetheless, we have here a good duel. A really good duel. And I actually was able to get away with making a match, which actually made me very happy. I didn't think I'd actually be able to record a match because the last time it was very bad. It was pretty huge like spikes. And here we see the Nekoseka, which kind of makes me unhappy. I did make one change to the deck, which was adding Breakthrough Skill because I was afraid of cards like Winda and, well, the Neko. And it was just a good card to mill, just for those continuous cards. Uh, but in other matchups, such as Clifford's, it's not so good. Or against Burning Abyss, it's not so good. So it is a good card to side out. I just didn't find any room in the side deck to put it in, just specifically for Shadows. But who cares anyways? It is a good card to have, at the least. I mean, if your opponent summons a mom, uh, summons Dante in attack position, because they're going to attack, and then you break through skill their Dante, they're stuck with a thousand beta that you can use to put damage and put pressure on. And so here we see him foolish. He foolish. I think he foolished a lizard and then a beast. Oh no, was it? It was a uh, falco. He sent uh, Squamata, then felt falco. Now he has that uh, wave and burster out and just is just going to town. As you can see, I didn't open up the best. I opened up with the two monsters that you just don't want to open up with, both of them at the same time. But they are still really good. I do really like Vanity Skin. He he helped me out in one game. Oh god, it was against Cliff Force. Like I got out towers, but I had Astral Force in my hand, so I was able to quickly make a uh, the Ring 5. But then I was afraid, oh no, he's just going to Pendulum some and some out his new towers and get rid of my monster. I'm going to lose. So I summoned out Vanity's Fiend, tributing the uh, 4,000 beta, and it looked pretty close like that was going to be game, but he was able to get around it, and he did end up beating me that game. And so we see the normal should all play, which is make Construct uh, during the battle phase to do a lot of damage. And here he has Dragon, which I think is interesting. He should have used Dragon. I like to use Dragon when I have the Nekoseka out on the field. Because it's like a night beam. It's just like that card's going away now. So even if you get rid of the Neko, you can't do anything. So I just really like that security it gives. But instead he sent Beast, which makes sense because he does have that Falco sitting there. And so he want, he probably wants that Beast in Grey. So one thing, then I draw into an upstart, which is lackluster to say the least. But then I draw into another Fire Lake. And I'm like, nope. That won't do me anything. And so my opponent here, what this has given me is seeing how I'm gonna surrender pretty soon. Yeah, I just surrendered. Um my opponent has no clue what I'm running actually. He hasn't seen my back row, all he saw was an upstart, so it gives me a huge side decking uh, pluses. And so I said in the DD Co, I said in the Max C, I said in another Vanities Fiend, which I should have probably not had in the side deck, because I haven't really sided it in. It hasn't done as well for me as what I thought it would. Um but Besides that, I do side out. Uh, I side out a Rubik because I wanted that Alich has another breakthrough skill. Because I was afraid of Windows and Deneco Psychos. I didn't want to see those guys. And Alich is a good way to get rid of them. And then here, of course, I do not draw or open up with two Burning Abyss monsters, which is what you need to run Burning Abyss. You need at least two Burning Abyss monsters, and I run a whole bunch. So I set the Coma Cut, and here I'm. You know, for some reason I was thinking I'd get off a summon from Sir, despite the fact that I have no monsters in Grave, which I don't, because I have no monsters in Grave, so eventually I will make uh, that, I will kind of get confused, because I will get rid of Sir, but I have no monsters in Grave, and I'll be like, why didn't I get the effect? Oh, right. But I do have DD Crow, which makes me and a lot of security, I like having those DD Crows in hands, because it just helps out a lot. And then I draw into Phoenix Wing Windblast, getting a very lackluster card uh, to draw into right now because I'd rather have, like, it's good, it's like, oh, I can reset the draw phase, that can give me a huge advantage, but I can't actually advance my uh, game state. And here I said two back row, which is really, really uh, risky to do in Burning Abyss because if you can't get rid of those back row, 
you can't play Burning Abyss, you can't summon out uh, two monsters. So here he gets off that Hedgehog, and what will he add? He has that El Shadal Fusion. Very rare that Shadals actually get out, get to get that Hedgehog flip, because normally it just goes away without flipping, and so then you have to search out Falco, and then you have to wait even longer, and they can get rid of Falcon, so it can be really annoying. But I am glad I'm losing to this deck, and not please. And so now he activates that El Shadal Fusion. I don't know why Phoenix Wing Wind Blasted him. Yeah, now he's gonna make a Winder, and he will get off a Beast, so that will not be bad for him. And yeah, at this point I am confused, like, why didn't I get Sir's Effect? Because I thought I would be getting Sir's Effect. But, um, then I realized, hey, I don't have a monster in Grave. So then he gets off a free attack for 22. And then I see and realize my stupidity. My stupidity. I don't think I'm saying that word right, but oh well. And what do I draw into? I draw into another Fire Lake. I have one Fire Lake on the field and one in hand now. So that is very lackluster for just not good at all. Well, I need to find some better words to say. Keep on saying lackluster. Uh, it's just it's just really good to just say, hey, you just this is a good example to say even the good decks can lose to bad hands. And that is something that when you're going into any tournament, you have to be able to get your deck to be consistent to a point where you can go nine hands no even more than nine hands that's that's like nine matches most regionals are like nine or like somewhere between seven to ten rounds of swiss so that means if it is nine which last uh regionals i went to it was nine that would mean 27 duels your hand has to be very consistent in because sometimes even if you lose just one match you won't talk that's just how it is and so that can be really really bad really unfortunate uh, for players where it's just like, I just had that one bad, ha bad hand and now I can't continue playing. But unfortunately, but luckily for this tournament, it is going on until the 25th, so there's going to be a lot of BC and a lot more other duels in here. But, um, I will do some other things in here as well. I'm going to have some different deck profiles and just try to keep up with things. Fortunately, it's going to be a lot of Burning Abyss, which sucks. And here I activate DD Crow just for, because I've lost. And it's just like, that's what I had. But yeah, this has just been uh, the first duel of finals. There were going to be much more. I've had some really good duel. I'm sitting here at 5 points, which isn't that bad right now. Hopefully, by the end of today, I can get it up to be 10. The great thing about this is that you can't go negative. If you lose, you only you don't gain anything. You don't lose anything also. So, if you win, um, you get points. You, if you go 2-0, you get 3 points. If you go 2-1, you get 2 points. And if you lose, you get 0. If you if it's a tie for some reason, then you get 1 point. But I don't think we're going to see any ties here in finals for whatever reason. But um, that is just how it works. So you can't lose any points. And seeing how this is going on against the 25th, you could have a slow start, but then you could come back up. There is no deck editing. There is no deck changing. It is just how it is. So it's going to be a little bit monotonous facing the same 16 people over and over again. But if you, this deck can just do its thing and I can at least get to the top 8 and get the top 8 award, which sounds really nice to me, um, that would be really great. Hopefully I can even get to the top 4. And this has been the... Yeah, this has been the first duel finals. There will be much, much, much more duels all the way up until the 25th. I will be doing them, but I will be doing other things also. I have ordered myself a camera, uh, so I shall be doing some other things that I think will be different, trying to do some uh, things in live action. I can do better opening videos now, which would make me happy. Maybe do some real life duels, maybe if I ever actually go back to locals, which I haven't gone to in forever, I'll um, 
start doing that again. So there's going to be a lot of things going on besides that. I should also do deck profiles, such as um, once uh, Dev Pro or Donovan Newer, whichever one first gets updated, probably Dev Pro, I would do Burning Abyss. Now that they have gotten new codes, I'll probably do a deck profile on Burning Abyss. And yeah, that is all. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to check out my previous video, which should be coming up soon. Leave a like, a comment. I'd actually like comments more than anything else. And possibly subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys later. Bye.